Welcome to the Friday edition of Wines World and I apologize for the tinsel behind me here because I'm making this on uh, January 5th which is 12th night so I'm not quite out of the Christmas season yet but I want to talk about that transition I want to talk about how we move from Epiphany into the start of the Easter season in the uh, Protestant tradition there's really not much that happens except that we have Epiphany and then we put all the lights and tinsel and decorations away and then we wait for Ash Wednesday to come and then we can start Lent in some traditions but in my Presbyterian tradition we never even celebrated Lent best we could do was have Pancake Tuesday that is Shrove Tuesday everything else passed without notice uh, until we got towards Holy Week uh, Palm Sunday uh, Maundy Thursday Good Friday and all of that that's all fine but Lent just didn't exist Lent is a primarily Catholic tradition and because it's primarily a Catholic tradition then the period before Lent is also primarily a Catholic tradition what happens is we say goodbye to Christmas on Epiphany different countries maybe have a Three Kings celebration or something like that and then everything's put away done and dusted and we know Lent is on the horizon so we begin Carnival and Carnival runs all the way from Epiphany to Ash Wednesday and it's different in different countries uh, people will know for example that in southern Louisiana in New Orleans in particular of course Mardi Gras, um, you know, Fat Tuesday, Shrove Tuesday, whatever you choose to call it, is the big day I mean, because it's the last day before Ash Wednesday. But Carnival builds up slowly to, to that point. It's just kind of like my unpacking business. Okay, we're, gonna, we're not just going to have Carnival on one day. We're going to have it on every weekend from the end of Epiphany until Ash Wednesday so coming up this weekend in certainly all the Catholic countries that I've lived in they will begin their carnival I've been in um, Argentina in Italy and also in Louisiana and watched it watched it unfold and that's what this particular um, <clears throat> video is going to be about how carnival unfolds there's going to be a lot of stills unfortunately I do have some videos as well and I'm not sure how long it's all going to be but let's get started <laughs> Now I'll just begin here with a few images of Mardi Gras. Uh, they're, they're not pictures that I took. I, I, I've been at, um, to Mardi Gras many, many years in a row, um, but uh, I don't have the, the the pictures that I took here. Um, and one of the things that you'll know about Mardi Gras, if you know anything about New Orleans, is that there are different crews. K R E W E, different crews representing different um, societies um, and so forth, and they have and they each make their own um, floats and their own um, 
uh, parades and, and each one does different things around the whole New Orleans area from all the way from Epiphany up until um, until Shrove Tuesday. And one of the big things is that the members of the crews, who are all disguised, you don't know who they are, they're all over these, um, uh, these parade floats, throwing things to the waiting crowds, mostly beads, but some Mardi Gras coins as well. Um, and sometimes these highly elaborately decorated coconuts Although they tend not to throw them, they tend to just give them out. But they're very, very special, and they don't happen very often. That's during the season leading up to Shrove Tuesday. And it gets more and more elaborate as the weeks go on. And the biggest thing that happens is that on the night, the Monday before Mardi Gras itself, the crews all have their own balls and um, you, you have to get tickets for the balls and it's quite difficult to get them. And then the crew comes actually into the, um, the ball um, where people have dinner and uh, they come and they also, they, they throw more and more things to the crowd and they're much more expensive and elaborate and so forth. And then psh, Ash Wednesday everything is gone. So that's what I, that, I mean that's what something that I was very familiar with back in um, late 90s, early 2000s um, and then I moved to Buenos Aires and in Buenos Aires we have a tradition called the Murugas and they are parade unlike anything I've seen anywhere else. It's a very particular kind of costume and a particular kind of dancing in parade form. And uh, what I'm going to do um, as I'm talking is I'll show you a sequence of uh, stills and maybe some videos as well. And you'll see that uh, each Muruga troop is associated with a particular bar barrio in, in Buenos Aires. And what they do is that every weekend they tour around the different barrios in Buenos Aires, mostly in the eastern part of Buenos Aires. I used to live in San Telmo and they used to block off about, I don't know, five or six blocks of San San Juan Avenue, uh, which is a main thoroughfare through San Telmo, and and then th each day, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday of the weekend, starting sometimes a little bit before s um, sundown, and continuing until about two o'clock in the morning on Fridays and Saturdays, and twelve o'clock on Sundays, different troops of morgas would come and demonstrate, each one maybe taking about an hour or a little less, and then they'd depart and a new one would come. And the Morgas represent different um, barrios in Buenos Aires, and they're all kind of competing, if you like, for honors. And they have a special kind of high-stepping dance, and they usually have music or drumming. Sometimes they have these exotically designed costumes with fake heads, not very common. They usually have a band who gets up on the bandstand and sings the, the song for, the, for these particular murgas. And they're typically political songs. They're songs um, parodying or satirizing the government, uh, uh, local things that are happening and so forth. So during the Dirty War in the 1970s, the Morgas were all banned. Um, they had been like citywide in Buenos Aires and the generals just said, no, we're not having that. You can't criticize the government at all. And they allowed maybe one or two 
troops under their control to perform in a, in a central area where you had to pay to get in and everybody was vetted and they couldn't sing songs that had anything to do with the military or the government or anything like that. So there's a very great danger that the tradition was going to die out because the people who perform the mor morgas start as little children as you'll see in some of these photos and as they get older they become teens and uh, and then into young adulthood and to middle age and old age they keep performing but um, there was that whole period of the dirty war and um, and, and, and its aftermath, um, maybe for about 20 years, when there were no morgues, and so there were no young people coming along. And there was a terrible fear that the tradition would not last. But the older people who still remembered how to do it and, um, and what, what it was all about and everything just said, no, nah, we're going to, this is, this is us. More than tango, which now is considered to be a bit of a joke, in Argentina, um, that this is who we are. And so every weekend up until um, Shrove Tuesday, on the last day, on the Tuesday, they have a massive um, meeting of all the morgas in one of the barrios. It was a fair distance from San Telmo, um, and, and I only went once. Um, because it was hard to get in and out because of the um, traffic and so forth. I had to walk about, I don't know, two, three kilometers to get there. But that's Buenos Aires. And that's very, very special, and it's very special to me. But they also have a very old tradition in a, um, a province called Entre Rios to the north of Buenos Aires in a town called Hualihuachu. Hualihuachu is a, like a nothing town, but it has a, um, a, a kind of a, a, a parade track, if you like. It's a, it's a road through a stadium where you've got banks of seats on either side, and in the middle you've got a road uh, that runs maybe about, I don't know, three or four hundred meters. And every weekend, in the, the, the period of Carnival, they, they have parades of all these different um, crews or societies or what have you, who parade through starting, I don't know, maybe I think it's about eight or nine o'clock at night and it goes on until about four in the morning. And it's just, it's just one after another, after another, after another. And you'll see here some of the images. And this is not like Morgas at all. This is very much like um, Brazilian Carnival, you know, like um, lots of flesh, <laughs> which, is, <laughs> which is a little dysfunctional because Huali uh, Wachu in February is really cold and so you've got both men and women very scantily clad sometimes i mean like some of them have got really really warm costumes on and each one has a theme and i can't remember how many different troops there were i think there were five or six and they're in competition with one another each year to see who's going to be the winner and these are very elaborate they've got um, dancers who, who are dancing along the, the street and you've got these um, parade floats uh, with music and singers and uh, usually with smoke and steam and lights and yeah it's just unbelievable um, and to see it you have to pay to get in uh, it, it's not done um, publicly um, like Waliwachu is a just really sleepy um, village in the middle of nowhere but people come in f for just one performance um, I went uh, rather rather um, late in the season um, when people were not very uh, interested and was able to get very very good seats at a decent price 
um, and uh, it was thoroughly enjoyable. I mean, there's people standing and clapping and dancing in the stands as they do it like at football matches, and and it's just uh, extraordinary. And then when I was living in uh, Lombardy, um, I had a break over um, the, the the period of Carnival. It was a um, um, I guess a mid mid term break or something like that. They gave me um, the I don't think I don't think it was the whole week, but I certainly got I got Shrove Tuesday and Ash Wednesday off school, um, and I think I probably had the Monday as well. Um, and we should talk about that sometime. The Monday is called Collop Monday. That's got its own recipes, so we'll talk about that. So I think I had the weekend, because I didn't work on weekends anyway, plus Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And because it's a little longer than normal, I was able to travel a little further than normal. And so I, I, um, I booked a, a hotel in Turin, because it was not somewhere I could, I could normally go um, on my weekends when I just used to take a, a, a day trip to let's say Milan or um, or Bologna or Brescia but but you know Turin was just too far I had to go to Milan change trains and then get another train and it would have taken all day just to get there so I booked a room for two nights and it was just absolute dumb luck I had I had picked a hotel that was way away from the center. And I was just wandering around the neighborhood where the hotel was. And all of a sudden, and th this was on, I think, if I'm not mistaken, I think it was the Sunday before um, Show of Tuesday, but it might have been, it might have been Show of Tuesday itself. I'm not, I'm not entirely sure. I have to go back and check my notes. Suddenly this parade appears. Now I knew it was about to happen because there were a lot of people standing around the streets in sort of anticipatory f flavor, you know, oh, something's happening. And they were some of them in costume. And I thought, okay, that's fine. I got my camera with me because I was, you know, being a tourist anyway. And this parade just came, and it was tiny, tiny little a suburb in the north of Turin, tiny streets, these people just came parading down in Italian Renaissance costumes um, with musicians and all kinds of other things and some of them in disguise and so forth and maybe an hour just parading through the streets, perfectly wonderful. Uh, which does remind me that, that Venice is, is uh, famous for its uh, festivals uh, around Carnival. Uh, they sell masks and whatnot, but it's mostly touristy. This was not remotely touristy. I was the only foreigner anywhere in sight. No, nobody, I mean, I don't think anyone even knew about it. It was just it was just local people just having a joyous time at Carnival. So this is something that in Asia I miss. I mean, you know, because they, they will do something minimal for Christmas because they know about it. No, they don't really do anything for Easter. Um, but Carnival just doesn't exist. And it also doesn't exist in, in Protestant countries for the most part. Um, the countries that I know best, uh, you know, you have to go to New Orleans for it because the, the bulk of the United States is Protestant and they don't do anything with it. And uh, same with, um, with the United Kingdom. Um, the Episcopal Church um, does uh, observe Lent, but they don't really do that much for Carnival. But in, in these countries, these countries that I became 
familiar with in, in recent years. They go bananas. <laughs> it's just adorable. So that's carnival. Now, um, Monday, the, the Monday after Epiphany is Plow Monday. So next Tuesday, I'm going to talk about Plow Monday and, and, and also Distaff Tuesday. And then I'll talk a little bit more about um, the, the, the in, intercession period between Epiphany and Lent, which is of various lengths. And this year it's quite long because Easter is pretty late. Um, I think Easter is around uh, April 17th or something like that. Um, my birthday is on March 30th and once in a great while um, my birthday is on Easter Sunday or Easter, Easter Saturday, Easter uh, Monday, even Good Friday, you know. So my, my birthday is a, is a kind of bellwether uh, of typical Easter times. When it's a week or two after my birthday, then it's kind of late. And because Epiphany is fixed, it's always going to be January 6th. If Easter is late, then Carnival period is extended. And that's how it is this year. So we'll have a lot of time to talk about Carnival and other things before we get to Pancake Tuesday and I'll make pancakes for you on Pancake Tuesday. So all right, so have a joyous weekend and get into the Carnival spirit if you are so inclined and I will see you on Tuesday.